truly we serve an amazing God and he Amen. is worthy of all honor, all glory, and all praise. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious and eternal God, we just thank you for this opportunity to come into your house. Lord, we know when praises go up to you, it shifts the atmosphere. Father God, we know that nobody is mad but the enemy. And Father God, we just take this time and we exalt your holy name because you alone are worthy. You alone, O oh Lord, are worthy of all the honor, of all the glory, and all the praise. Father God, we just exalt your name in this atmosphere. We lift you up in our hearts. We lift you up in this place. For you said in your word that if you be lifted up, you will draw all men unto you. So, Father God, as we exalt your holy name, as we praise your name, we ask that you hover the atmosphere, that you just be present, O oh Lord, that you just that you be present, O oh Lord, as we exalt your holy name. Yeah. Father, we just thank you for this time. We thank yes. you for this yes. thy appointed time and this yes. thy hour. Yes. Lord, we just ask that you just show up in this place and you Amen. show out. Yes. Father God, we just thank you for all that you are doing and all that you have done. In Jesus' mighty and baptist name, we pray and give you thanks. Can you do that one more time? We exalt you, O oh Lord. wherever we are. Amen. Our motto here is uplifting people through dignity of discovered purpose, one life, one community, one city at a time. We believe that everyone has purpose. And that means that we believe that each and every one of you has a purpose in God's kingdom. If you are able, would you please stand and join me and let us do our mission together. Would you please stand and join us and do the mission together? Let us, let us do our mission together. Our mission is to create pathways to discover and fulfill one's life purpose and provide kingdom building opportunities through community involvement. If you know anything about Washington Heights United Methodist Church, you know we are heavily involved in our community. We care about the people in the community. That means that we care about you. Amen. 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 Well, we thank God for you. Amen. Bless the Lord. Amen. That's a hallelujah moment. Amen. You may be seated if you can. And I need for you to listen to 
this vision as I share it with you. Our vision is that all. Somebody say all. all. Look at your neighbor and say that means you. That means you. We want all people to flourish in their lives purpose and their relationships with God and with one another. We believe that if we can get our relationship with God right, we can get our relationship with one another right. Amen. 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 You know, uh, nowadays people try to make God irrelevant, but God is very relevant in this time and in this season. Yes. Yeah. In this time and in this yeah. season, God is a very relevant God. And for this yeah. reason, we are here to worship and yes. to uplift his holy name. Yes. Amen. 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 We serve an amazing God and he is worthy. So, I, you know, I don't know about you, but we made that saying last week. We said, this is the day, this is the day. that the Lord has made. Yes. And we are determined to rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. I woke up this morning yes. with only three hours of sleep. Because I was up to about 2.30 last night working on today's uh, sermon and then also working on the PowerPoint. And then at 2.30, I lost everything. But I said, you know what? I'm not going to worry about it. I'm going, to, I'm going to sleep. I said, I'll get up in the morning. We'll start all over again. So I was able to recover the message. But the PowerPoint and everything was lost. So... Uh, we're going to rejoice because God is in control. Amen. I, I was trying something new and we had everything. It was, it was a beautiful PowerPoint. And I was just like, okay, well, we're going to see how this how this works. And I lost it. So. That's all right. Um, we, we got still you, excited. Pastor. We got you. Amen. We're still excited. We're excited. We got it. We got the Lord in this place, yeah, in this yeah, atmosphere, yeah. in this house, and so we are excited about it. I do have some announcements that I want to share with you. Um, we have dinner church, and I don't have anything in front of me, so I can't, I don't know what's going to come up on the screen. <laughs> so we do have dinner church, which is on Tuesdays um, at 12 o'clock, Wednesdays at Four, and then today we will have dinner church after service yeah. and we know that the community and everyone is invited to Amen. participate. Amen. 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 Also um, on Tuesdays we've been having a program called the Wise Money Kids. Mm. We've been having a great turn. I think we have over 40 children. Our goal wow. was to have 40. Amen. So we have over 40 children participating in this great program. Amen. Um, after they finish the program, they have an opportunity um, to be blessed. Amen. 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 So we Amen. just thank God um, for the Wise Money Kids program, which is uh, Wednesday, Tuesdays at 530. We have some awesome facilitators. Let's give God a hand for our facilitators. You know, we believe that our children are too important Amen. for them to go by the wayside. Right. Amen. 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 We love Amen. our children. Amen. Um, that means that we love you. Amen. 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 They, they, they may not want to hear, but we love you anyway. Amen. 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 We believe that you are too important. We think that there is too much in you for it to go to waste. Amen. We believe Amen. that God has placed some great things inside of our children. I believe that God has placed some great things inside of each and every individual and only we have the ability to deliver it to the world. Yes. Amen. All right. Amen. Amen. On uh, Wednesdays, we have the Empower You program, which is financial literacy for our adults. Uh, we want our adults to um, practice good financial uh, practices and so we want to provide the information and the tools that you need so that you can be prepared for life. Amen. 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 No matter how young or how, how wise you are, all are welcome to participate. Amen. 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 Um, also on Wednesdays we have Midweek Manor which is at 3 p.m. We've been having a great time in the Lord so we just invite you please join us for Midweek Manor. And then the line dance class. The line dance class is on Friday. I mean, Thursdays at 5:30. Uh, we've been having a great time. Um, we had a tag team uh, instructors this past week, but we're looking forward to you all joining us because, and we have a, a we have a, a great group, and we want to build up on that group because we're looking to uh, participate in July uh, for the community carnival. 
and we'll do a presentation of the line dancers. So you need to come to class so you can be a part. Amen. 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 Isn't that right, Sister Dion? That's right. Amen. <laughs> Uh, the Beautiful You program is April the 28th from 1 to 2 p.m. If you are interested, this uh, program is for middle school age uh, children. Uh, we want them to participate, both male and female. Um, if you're interested, please see Sister Crawford after service. She can give you more information. Um, if you know of some middle school age children, please, please, please encourage them to participate in this program. Again, our goal is to reach out to between 40 and 50 youth. We want them to participate in this program. There will be some great things in store for them, and then they'll um, also be receiving some things. But we need to know. We have to have a count because we'll be providing um, some snacks for them. So Amen. we need to have a count for that program. Amen. Amen. And so I think with that being said, um, the computer lab. The computer lab is on Thursdays at 11 o'clock. Yes. Amen. At 11 o'clock, every Thursday at 11 o'clock, we have a great instructor, Sister Jasmine, has stepped up and filled that role. So we thank God for her um, teaching our, um, our wise, wise in heart, our, our young at heart, um, our young at heart members, um, how to use technology. And so we thank God, and it's open to anyone who wants to learn. Amen. Are there any other announcements? I want to thank huh? Oh no 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 <laughs> I don't know what you just said but uh, <laughs> um, we want to thank everybody who um, helped us on this past Thursday for the Washington Heights Heroes. Um, we will be doing that again on May the 4th, which is a Wednesday. Um, at 3 p.m. and so we're asking they're in need of volunteers and so if you want to volunteer we ask that you see Sister uh, Harris um, to volunteer for that that ministry as well all right um, so with that being said we want to show you a little bit about what that ministry was about received a lot of different comments um, and so we thank God I think our goal was to reach 78 78 or 79 but we exceeded our goal and so we thank God for that opportunity Amen. are there any other announcements um, happy Easter everyone happy Easter happy resurrection Sunday amen yes 
Praise God. Praise God. If you're as excited as I am to be alive on this day, yeah. Jesus rose on this day, and Lord knows what we got to deal with in the world, thank God we're here to help out with being a part of the solution. Amen. I do want you to know, be aware, there's going to be a campaign going shortly or getting a community choir that will be here to say, I need a choir, y'all. Amen. And I know you need a choir. Yes. The many voices that come together to show that, hey, we can all praise the Lord and not all be on a, a single voice here. Uh, I'm out of my comfort zone. Amen. God has always made us go through. Yes. I want you to know that campaign is coming. So listen out for it. I'll let you know where we're going to meet, and we will just bless the world. Amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor. Amen. Are there any other announcements? Yes, ma'am. Could I make a song request? A song request? Okay. Arise, my love. Arise, my love. Do we know? We don't know. Arise, my love. You don't know it. You want to sing it? I can sing. You can sing it. I'd have to play it on my phone. Can you sing it? Okay. Well, you get ready, and we're gonna bring you up so you can sing it in a minute. Amen. Are there any other announcements? 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 Amen. Are there any other announcements? We want to thank God for all our visitors. Um, we are happy to have you in the house today. Um, we thank God for you. We uh, want to bless our online viewers. We thank God for our online viewers. We have people in, um, uh, what is it, Las Vegas, Nevada, North Carolina, uh, Verbena, Alabama. We have people in Flint, Michigan, Saginaw, Michigan. So we just thank God for our online viewers. I don't want to get to calling names because I'll get in trouble. We thank God for um, the ones that we have doing with us who are here in the city of Battle Creek as well. Um, so I thank God for all of you. Um, also on yesterday, Brother Archie, he celebrated his birthday on yesterday. Wow. And so we want to sing happy birthday to him. Thank God uh, for him being able to celebrate his birthday. Happy birthday.
the M and a W and then E E and then a three. The E stands for God's everlasting love and His eternal plan. It reminds us of the cross and the way God rescued sinful man. The three represents the three days Jesus spent in the grave. By his death, his children, he did save. The M reminds us of the Messiah shown as he died in our place and the miracle of our resurrections and so we can see him face to face. The W reminds us that he's alone is worthy of our worship and praise and he calls us to be his witness around the world for all of our days. Amen. Oh, Far from this forging Easter dam and chilly, my soul steals to pure shade plot up of ground where gleamed the lilac to the Easter lily. <coughs> Soft and scented in the air for yards around, along without a hint of guardian leaf, like just like a fragile bell of silver rhyme. It burst the time for freedom, sweet and brief, in the young pregnant year of Easter time. And many thought it was a scare sign, and some called it the real. Re, re, reaction, re, I a pageant worship at its shrine, yielding my heart and onto its performed power. Guys, oh my God! Okay. <laughs> Our Lord died on Good Friday, but the cross did not run His vibe on Easter morning. The, that fills our hearts with happiness. Now we know our we're worthy death like His. It's just a rest. We will be forever with Him in paradise, where life is best. So we live our life for Jesus. Think of Him in all we do. Thank you, Savior. Thank you, Lord. Help us with, help us love like you. you. Yeah. God sent His Son to take the punishment for all of the thoughtless, sinful things we do. Jesus gave us His life because He loves us. His love is boundless, sweet, forever, and true. On Easter morning. He showed he is our Savior. His um, resurrection. Yeah, yeah. Proves. <laughs> proves he, he's our Lord. That is why we tell you Happy Easter. Amen. Good morning. Good afternoon. I'm Rylan Thompson. I'm going to tell you the gospel of jelly beans. Black is for our sins and the wrong that we have done. Red is for the blood that he sheds for everyone. Green is for the grass that grew beside our grave. Blue represents the world that he gave his life to save. Purple is for the rulers who against him could not win. White is for the linen that they wrapped his body in. Orange is for the color of the sky at the edge of night. And yellow is for the sun who, uh, who is the way, the truth, and light. Now as you empty the bags of candy that we brought to share with you, remember that on the third day his tomb was empty too. Oh, yeah. Yeah.
she may need to put it in the, the, the uh, right here. Right here. You know? Introduce yourself, please. My name is Ashley Baker. This here is my first time back to church in years. All right, well, I've been going through a lot, and I, I needed to come back. Good. And this is a song for Easter. It's called Arise My Love by New Song. shuffling of soldiers' feet as they got into grave. One day, two days, three days had passed to be that Jesus breathed his last. Could it be that his father had forsaken him, turned his back on his son, despising our sins. All right. I seem to whisper, just forget it, he's gone. And the father looked down to his son and said,
She's never experienced you before. Father God, we ask that you just uh, be up on her. Allow her to know that you are here, that you care for her. Father God, just search the deep recesses of her heart. Whatever it is, Father God, minister to her in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we ask that you just allow her to feel your presence. That you just keep her, you guide her. Father God, deliver, 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 deliverance. Allow deliverance to take place, oh Lord. Allow deliverance to occur in her life, Father God. We ask that you wash her with the blood of the Lamb. For this reason, and you have come, oh Lord, we ask that you just be with her in the mighty name of Jesus. Father God, we uh, just ask that you just continue to uh, perfect her, saturate her with your presence. Allow her to know that there is nothing too hard for you, Father God. But we ask that as you are delivering her from the, the spirit, Father God, that's trying to take hold of her life, Father God, deliverance occur. Father God, we ask that you just keep her. Keep her, O oh Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray and we praise you. Amen, amen, and amen. somebody is going through it. And we always want, uh, you know, God is going to have his way. Well, Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. God is going to have his way. Yeah. So with that being said, we ask that our scripture reader, if you would please come. chapter verses 1 through 8 and we're taking it from the New King James Version. He is risen. Now after the Sabbath as the first day of the week began to dawn Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to see the tomb and behold there was a great earthquake for an angel of the Lord had descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone mm -hmm. from the door and sat on mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. His countenance was like lightning mm -hmm. and his clothing as white as snow. Mm -hmm. And the guards shook for fear of him mm -hmm. and became like dead men. Mm -hmm. But the angel answered and said to the women, do not be afraid, mm -hmm. for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. Amen. He is 
not here, for he is risen, as he said. Come, see the place where the Lord lay, and go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And indeed, he is going before you into Galilee. There you will see him. Behold, I have told you. And the eighth and last verse. So they went out quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy and ran to bring his disciples the word. Amen. Amen. The word of God for the people of God. Amen. Amen. God. Amen. You know, when I came, I knew God was going to do some unexpected and some exciting things today. Um, anytime that the, the, the enemy tries to stand in God's way, you know God is up to something. Amen. So Amen. I'm going to take this, I'm going to ask that we take this opportunity, if you will, and everybody please stand Amen. as we um, prepare to pray. I need us to be in a posture and a position, an attitude of gratitude. Um, I need for us just to begin to give God thanks for how he is moving and how he has moved in our own lives. We know that if God can move in our lives, he can move in the lives of those who need him. So I ask that you please posture yourself in an attitude of gratitude. Just give God thanks. Just begin to minister unto the Lord. From your heart to his heart, tell him how thankful you are and how much joy you have for the little things that he has done. You know, it may be difficult, it may be difficult, but we know that God is in control. Yes, yes, Lord. So just begin to minister to the Lord. Just begin to minister to the Lord. Just begin to give God thanks. At this time, you shouldn't be looking at nobody else. You should be concentrating and your focus should be on giving God thanks for what he has done in your life. Because you know what? We don't know what we may encounter when we leave this place. But we want to give God thanks for this moment that we have right now. So just begin to give him thanks. Just begin to think about all the things that God has done for you in your life. You know, I... I give God thanks for even our young people. You know, I give God thanks for even our young people because you don't know the prayers that have been protecting you. You don't know the prayers that have been covering you or what you might experience in this life. But I just begin to give God thanks for each and every one of you and how his hand has been upon your life and how he has kept you uh, thus far. I, I thank the Lord for how he has brought me over dangerous heights of testings and trial. I thank God for how he has fed me when there were times when I didn't know how I was going to eat. I thank God for the times that he has made a way out of no way when bills were able to be paid when I didn't know how they were going to be paid. I thank God for bringing me a mighty long ways when I was at my lowest low and I didn't think that anybody cared about me and God always sent somebody to tell me that he loved me. I thank God for those times when I had to cry because I didn't know how I was going to make it, but God always made a way. I thank God for healing that has taken place, not only in my body, but how he brought my mother, who is a three-time cancer survivor. I thank God for how he has allowed me to just experience his love. You know, just begin to give God thanks for your things that he has done for you in your life. Lord, I just thank you. Lord, we thank you in this place. Father God, we thank you in this place. Father God, we thank you in this place. Lord, we just worship you. We exalt you. We praise your holy name because you alone are worthy. Father God, we just lift you up. You said in your word that if you be lifted up, you will draw all men unto you. And Father God, we lift you up in our hearts. We lift you up in our homes. We lift you up in this house.
house of worship. Lord, we ask that you just be in the midst. Father God, we just uh, surrender our all to you and we just thank you, Father God. We thank you because you are the Alpha and the Omega. You are the beginning and the end. Father God, you are a way maker. You are Jehovah Gabor, the God that fights for us. When the enemy comes in like a flood, you lift up a standard against him. And Father God, we thank you right now in the name of Jesus, how you are moving in this place, how you are moving in the lives of your people. Father God, we thank you that you are a mighty God. You are an awesome wonder. We thank you for the miraculous healing that is taking place in this midst. Lord, we thank you for deliverance that is taking place in this midst. Father God, we know that there is nothing too hard for you. And Father God, that you are able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can even imagine, ask, or think. Lord, we thank you for moving in the lives and the hearts of your people in this community. We thank you for opening up the windows of heaven and pouring out your blessings upon your people. Lord, we just thank you for how you are moving. Lord, we just give you all the honor and all the glory and all the praise. And it's in Jesus' mighty and matchless name. All you guys, people, put your hands together and give God praise. I want to take this time and I really want to speak to our young ladies. I really want to speak to our young ladies and I want to speak to the depths of your soul. I want to speak to your spirit. You know that there is so much in you that you are too beautiful to, to engage and to do a lot of things that you do. God sees so much in you and there is so much that you have to offer than what you've been given. There is so much, you have so much gift, there is so much in you that you have to give this world that you've been holding back on. God sees so much in you that you that you have been um, not delivering. You know, I just want you to encourage you. I want to encourage you because you are some beautiful young ladies and you have so much to offer. But you know, sometimes people can't see what you have to offer because of what you've been giving. Man, I know you know what I'm talking about. But y'all have too much to offer. You're too talented. You're too beautiful to give what you've been given. Okay? Amen. Amen. I just want to say that to you. I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you in the Lord. Because you are some beautiful young ladies. Amen. And y'all have so much to offer. I know y'all have some good gifts and some great talents. Amen. Y'all have some good gifts and some great talents. Amen. 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 Begin to tap into your gifts. Amen. Use your gifts that God has given you. I know that, you, that there are some, some pictures that haven't been painted. That's right. There are some books that haven't been written. Amen. Y'all have some great gifts. And you need to know it. Amen. So y'all know I love you and ain't nothing you can do about it. Amen. All right. Amen. 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 God bless you. So we have um, a music selection followed by a video and then I'll come back and give the message. Amen. I grew up under a strict mother. You know, her favorite word was no. All the, no, no, no. And when someone chastises you, that means they love you. If you're not chastised, if somebody don't get on you about something, then they don't care. But if they care about you, they're going to point out some flaws or some things that you need to change. So don't take it as if that person is just on you. Say, hey, well, let me think. You know, maybe they're trying to point me in the right direction. Then I got to tell you one more thing. 
So this uh, week I had a procedure I was supposed to get done on my throat. So that morning I got up, <clears throat> I said, oh, I'm hungry. I said, let me fix a big old breakfast, right? So when I went to the office to get the procedure done, they said, well, have you eaten anything? I said, I sure did. <laughs> he said, well, didn't they tell you you wasn't supposed to eat? <laughs> So they had to reschedule the procedure, and I'm getting it done next week, but I thought that was pretty funny to me. I said, I sure did. I ate a good old meal. <laughs> All right, I'm going to attempt to sing. Yeah, I know. 
I'm just so sad. I got this in here from my young people. Amen. This is spoken word. Amen. And the picture that it paints of an artist so brilliant he can scarcely be defined, praise him. For the first time that you paused to notice the open sky and wondered what kind of imagination could inspire such beautiful things from scratch, praise him from scratch. For dust held in the hands of a master craftsman, unafraid to share his likeness with those he knew would break his heart and test his patience and try his love. Praise him for the borrowed breath that you breathe and faculties that function so as to remind you that you are not your own for a love that finds its way to you in every season, letting you know that you are not alone. Praise him. Remembering never to forget all of his benefits, too numerous to be calculated, too heavy to be weighed on scales, too astronomical to be quantified. Praise him for the miracles that your eyes have seen, that you are too hard-hearted to believe, too nearsighted to perceive, and too self-sufficient to receive, and still somehow he met all of your needs. Praise him. raised for joy, given in the deep of night. Praise him for the night and weeping that always expires and lasts only as long as he allows. Come on, praise him for all that he allows, all that he permits, all that he prevents, and all that he allows. Praise him for blessings often overlooked because they're disguised. Praise him for Jesus who brought the radiance of the sun in the tyranny of an unrelenting dark night. And before you were even awake to the world, you gloried in his light, warmed by the generosity of his love, carried from death to life on the wings of faith. Remember your name uttered in a prayer and your heart awakened to your need for a savior. Remember your savior who showed up at just the right time to show humanity that God would never turn he made. Praise him for the way that he came. Matchless power contained in the frame of a child born in a city as obscure as they come. The giver of life filling up his very own lungs with the same breath that we breathe to show that he is not ashamed of us. He is well acquainted with us. He is committed no matter what the cost of saving us. Praise him for saving us and the cross that provided the means, the door through which we enter, the shade under which we rest, his righteousness and not our own, his grace and his grace alone, calling us out and bringing us in, conquering death and absolving our sin. Let me say it again. Praise him in the season that you're in. Resurrection Sunday. Yes. Gracious and eternal God, I thank you for this opportunity to be able to speak your blessed word. Father God, I pray that I decrease and you increase. Allow the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart to be acceptable in thy sight, for truly you are my rock and my redeemer. Father God, I just pray that as your word go forth, it's etched into our hearts. Most importantly, it's manifested into our lives, and I pray this all in Jesus' mighty and master's name. Yes. And all you guys people your hands together say amen. 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 Uh, today's message is promise kept. Somebody say promise kept. Promise kept. How many of you know that God is faithful? He is faithful to yes. his word. Yes. He yes. will keep amen. his word. Yes. Promise kept. He is risen. The scripture has already been read into your hearing. And so the next statement that I am about to make is a paradoxical statement. Mm. So I don't want you to miss it. 
God gave man two very important gifts. The first gift that God gave man was a very important gift, and it's the gift of life. Somebody say the gift of life. The gift of life. Another great gift that God gave man was the gift of death. You may be saying to yourself, why is death a great gift? Because humanity lost the life God gave them, and it was only through death that we were able to get it back. Come on, somebody give Amen. God praise. Right. Yes. Amen. That's what I believe. That is what I believe. And listen, what I believe is not esoteric, understood, or meant by only a select few who have special knowledge or interest, but the gospel message of Jesus Christ is available to all those who are open to the truth. Somebody say that. Amen. 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 Let me show you why I believe what I believe. Because on what we call Good Friday, Jesus said it is finished. Amen. It is finished in Greek is tetelestia. The sixth word that Jesus spoke from the cross. The word it told of a completed work to which nothing can now be added and now nothing can be taken away. On that Friday, the picture of Jesus in the last minutes of his life would appear to some that it was a place of utter defeat. But even in the face of death, Jesus is and always was and is in control. Somebody say the promise. As a matter of fact, in John, the 10th chapter, the 18th verse, Jesus told his followers what was going to happen when he said, no one takes my life. I lay it down. It, in this case, is a reference to his life. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down on my own accord. This statement is clearly saying that Jesus has the authority to lay it down yeah. and the authority to pick it up again. All right. All right. This command I received from the Father, I need you to be a little patient with me because I have to set this thing up right. Amen. So that we can see the significance about what we are celebrating today. Amen. When we celebrate what we call Easter, some people call it Resurrection Sunday. It doesn't matter to me what you call it. What matters to me most importantly is that we understand the reason why we celebrate this day. Amen. Amen. If you look in the book of John, the 19th chapter and the 30th verse, it says, When Jesus had received the wine, he said, It is finished. Then he bowed his head and he gave up his spirit. Tatalistia. It is finished. Somebody shout, it is finished. It is finished. So the question then becomes, what is the it that is finished? Well, the word it is used to refer to a thing previously mentioned or easily identified. So what is the it that is finished? Can I go a little deeper? Yeah, yeah. To understand the it that is finished, we must go back to the beginning. Mm -hmm. So y'all roll with me. From the very beginning, it is stated that God is the creator of everything yeah. in heaven and in earth. Yeah. It is stated in the Bible, and beginning with the book of Genesis and all throughout the Bible, there is over a hundred scriptures that point to God as being the creator. It says, in the beginning, in the dateless past, God, somebody say God. God. Everything begins and ends with God. He is the Alpha and the Omega. He is the beginning and the end. God Elohim, the creator, he created. The word created in Hebrew is the word Barak which means brought out of nothing. God's idea is created with his words. Let me say that again. God's idea is created with his words. The kingdom of God is established with his words and let there be. These words speak to God's divinity and his awesome power. The king establishes his kingdom. And the spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, was hovering and present to establish God's order. The Holy Spirit is present as God's governor with the responsibility of carrying out God's order, carrying out God's word, carrying out God's administration, and let there be. I'm going to move quickly. Stay with me now. In Genesis 1 and 26, God stated what he was going to do. And in Genesis 1 and 27 and 28, what happened? God did it. 
God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Then God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth, subdue it, and have dominion. Somebody say have a dominion. Have a dominion. Over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves up on the earth. God said, let us make man. The word man is a plural term. It designates human beings regardless of their gender. In Hebrew, the word is ish. Somebody say ish. Ish, ish is a proper name, collectively of man, both male and female. Ish is a category. Man is a plural term. Knowing that we understand that God wasn't making a person, but he was making a species, and he called that species man. Yeah. Man comes in two models, male and female. Then God says, I want to make this creation in my image. Image here does not mean look like. The Hebrew word for image means character. Somebody says character. God says, let me make man and let this man have the same characteristics as me. When we were created, God created us to have the characteristics and the qualities of God. Amen. Meaning God by nature is wholly good. You can look that up in Mark 10 and 18 and 1 Timothy 4 and 4. His goodness is unmatched and because of it we can trust him. God is faithful. Yeah. We were created with God's character. I need for us to get it. Somebody who got it say I got it. I got so that when we can understand that we can understand the significance of it. Yeah. We were created in God's image. We were created to be God's representatives here on earth. It doesn't matter if you're black, white, Asian, Hispanic, Native American, or other. It does not matter. We were all originally created with the characteristics of God in us. Come on, somebody should have been giving God praise. We have God's image. We were created as his representatives to represent him here on earth. God says that about us, the human race. Scripture says, then God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. The word likeness in Hebrew means to function like. Somebody say function like. God said, let us make a creation that has our characteristics and functions like we function. Then God said, let them have dominion. Somebody say, uh-oh. Uh -huh. God's original purpose for his creation, man, was that we represent God and have dominion on earth. Why is that important? Somebody shout dominion. Dominion. Because God said, let them have dominion. God's original purpose for creating his creation, man, was that we be his representatives here on earth and have dominion over the earth. Yeah. And because God gave man dominion, God himself would not interfere in this earth without license or permission because he gave it to us. Well, yeah. Come on, take a deep breath. Well. Stay with me. I know it sounds so unbelievable, but if we don't understand this, we might miss the importance and the significance of the promise. I need you to walk with me real quickly, and I'm going to give you seven things that I want you to write down. And if you miss it, go back and watch the replay. Because uh, I did have it up there, so you could have took a picture, but it got lost. So God just, he wants you to go back and watch the replay. Amen. The first thing, the legal authority to dominate earth was given to humanity. You can look that up in Genesis 1 and 27. This was a legal trans transaction that was originally instigated by God. God said in Genesis 1 and 26 what he was going to do. I pointed that out to you. And then in Genesis 1 and 27 and 28, God did it. And then he gave that authority to his creation called man. God did not include himself in the legal authority structure on earth. He said, let them have dominion. So he took himself out of the equation. All right. All right. The word dominion is rada, which means dominant ruler. God made man, male and female rulers here on earth. Not God. All right. Still breathing? Still yeah. staying with me? Yeah. Let me explain. 
It's not because God is weak. God can do what he pleases. God can do what he want to do. This is not an argument about whether or not God is sovereign or not sovereign. He is king of kings and lord of lords, but will never break his own word because God is faithful. Amen. God will never break his word because right. God is faithful. Listen, in Genesis 2 and 7, explains that man became the legal steward of the earthly dominion. Wow. It says, and the Lord God formed the man of the dust of the ground, and he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living being. Why we are we are the legal region on earth. Why? Because humanity is a spirit in a dirt body. All right. All right. Only spirits in a physical body are legal here on earth. Wow. Let me say that again. Only spirits in a physical body are legal here on earth. Any spirit without a dirt body is illegal on earth. That includes God Himself. Amen. I know it's hard to understand this, but God will not break his word. Somebody should have been praising God right there because he is faithful. God will never break his word. Number six, any supernatural influence on earth is only legal through humus. That's H-U-M-U-S, humus. Humus, the word human, we, came, we got that from the Latin word humus, meaning earth or ground. A human. Number seven, God is faithful to his word. You want me to go a little deeper? Let me ask you this question. Reading the book of Genesis, have you ever thought to yourself when Eve picked that fruit, why God didn't stop her? Okay. Okay. By show of hands, how many of you have asked that question? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. God could have saved us a whole lot of problems if he had just stop Eve from picking that piece of fruit. Yes. Amen. He could have saved us from a whole lot of trouble. He could have saved the whole human race right then and right there if he had just stopped her from eating that fruit. Yes. God could have smacked that piece of fruit out of her hand. <laughs> he heard the conversation that was happening between uh, the woman and the devil. He was watching the whole thing because God sees everything. Yes. See, God yes. sees those conversations we be having behind closed yes. doors. Yes. Or, or we be having on the television. God sees everything. So the question in my mind remains, why didn't he stop her? Why didn't he interfere? This is an important question. And it's important for us to get an understanding. Why? Stay with me now. If God is almighty, all powerful, omnipotent God, why didn't he stop that woman from picking the fruit? You want to know the answer? Yes. By show of hands, how many you want to know the answer? Yes. When I discovered this, it blew my mind. Listen, listen, listen. Pay attention. Listen, listen, listen. If God had come in and interfered with that operation, that translation, he would have violated his own law, his own word, and we could never trust him again because he would be faithful to his word because he would have broke his word because he did not keep his word. Stay with me. See, Lucifer, Satan, whatever you want to call him, he is a spirit being. What does he need? What does he want? He wants to do business here on earth. So what does he need? A body. So he enters into conversation and he enters into a negotiation with the serpent. And he said, let me use your body. The serpent is what? 100% dirt. The serpent is made from the earth. It's dirt. The devil tells the serpent, serpent, loan me your body for a few minutes so I could temporarily be legal on earth and do business with this woman. Right. Satan needed a dirt body so that he could do business with this woman. Right. Through this dirt body, the whole human race was about to experience the fall and God could not get involved, not because God is weak, not because God is not powerful, not because God is omnipotent, not because God is not all-knowing, not because God is not omnipresent, not because God is not almighty, not because God is not all-powerful God, but because he is too faithful to his word. Come on, somebody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God did 
didn't interfere then because he is faithful to his word. God didn't inter interfere because he is faithful to his word and the devil knew it. That's why he rejoiced when God said, let me give them dominion. Remember, Satan used to live with God. He knows God very well. Well, Satan knew that God would never break his word. I'm going to shout if I got to shout all by myself. Yeah. God will never break his word because he is faithful. Yeah. Satan was glad when God said, let them have dominion. Because he knew when he was tricking the woman that God wouldn't interfere because he would never break his word. God's original idea for creation of humanity was that they have dominion and represent him on earth. God gave humanity dominion. Amen. But, somebody say but. But. But humanity, male and female, gave dominion away. Yeah, exactly. Adam and Eve gave dominion, their authority, their power over to Satan. Yeah. A legal transaction yeah. took place. Yeah. Until Jesus fulfilled it, it being the promise, the command of the Father, it is the requirement, the fulfillment of the law, yeah. penalty paid by death. Yeah. The whole human race collapsed and humanity declared independence from God and the kingdom of heaven. Earth became a colony without a kingdom. We lost our father and our government. The Bible says even the Holy Spirit had to leave. He could no longer strive with man. If you don't believe it, read that in Genesis 6 and 3. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is the governing spirit. If you have studied the Old Testament, there is no incident in the whole Old Old Testament where the Holy Spirit ever lived in man. Why? Because it was illegal. So when the prophets prophesied, for example, they never possessed the Holy Spirit. The Bible said that he will come up on them, they will prophesy, then he will leave. Why? He could not live in humanity because humanity became contaminated. He could not stay on earth until a cleansing took place. Somebody say it. Yeah. So God had a plan. Look, in Genesis 3, the whole thing fell apart. God wouldn't come in, but Satan forgot that God could still talk. Yeah. In the third chapter in the 15th verse, God spoke directly to Satan with a promise. Somebody say a promise. Right. He said, I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed. And he shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. I'm going to paraphrase that for you. Satan, you thought you were pretty smart by tricking this woman. Yeah, you thought you were pretty smart. Yeah, that was pretty good by tricking this woman and snatching the keys to the kingdom. You knew I wouldn't interfere. You right. I wouldn't break my word because I'm too faithful. I wouldn't break my own law. But I'm making you this promise. Somebody shout the promise. promise. That same entity called woman you used to mess things up. I'm going to use and she's going to give me a body and I'm going to come in legally and I'm going to crush your head. That's a promise. Somebody stop the promise. Now we know why Jesus had to come as a man. God is faithful to his word. He made a promise back in Genesis 3. Isn't God good? Amen. The entire Old Testament, in my view, is simply a complete repetition of God's promise. God promised, I'm coming. God promised, I'm coming. God promised, I'm coming. God promised, I'm coming. Isaiah gives us some of the details of God's promise. He said, the virgin shall be with child, and she shall conceive and bring forth the son, and his name shall be called Emmanuel. Yeah. Yeah. All right. M means in. Man means humanity. L means Elohim. This name Emmanuel means God inside man's body. Come on, somebody give God praise. I don't know about you, but that was good to me. God inside man's body. Isaiah, the ninth chapter says, For unto us a child will be born, not the son, because the son is never born. For unto us a child will be born, 
born. Don't confuse the child with the son. Mary is not the mother of the son. She is the mother of the child. The child is the body. For unto us a child will be born, but not the son. The son is going to be given. I'm going to put the son inside the child. The child will be dirt, but the son is Elohim, God, Jehovah. So the child will make the son legal. And 4,000 years later, it says in the fullness of time, God sent his son born of a woman to fulfill his promise. Come on, somebody give God praise. Yeah. The angel said to Mary, you shall conceive and you shall bear a child. You're going to call the child. God was very specific in his language, in his verbiage. He said, you're going to call the child Jesus, Yeshua, which means Savior. So you're going to name the child, but I'm going to tell you the name of the son. He already has a name. He is the Christ, but the child will be called Jesus. Yes. That's the body. So Jesus made Christ legal. Jesus was 100% man and Christ is 100% God. And Satan didn't know what to do with that. God came into the earth legal and now he can get down to business without breaking his own law. Come on somebody. Get high. Yeah. Promise keeper. Somebody said promise kept. Listen, on that Good Friday, when the Sanhedrin Council brought Jesus up on charges of an insurrection, Pilate began his interrogation with Jesus with the question, are you a king? This is a very important question. Listen, pay attention, pay attention. Because for three years, Jesus was announcing a kingdom. The kingdom of God is near. The kingdom of God is at hand. This good news he shared with the poor, the captive, and the oppressed. He was making the announcement and letting the devil know, I am faithful to my word. I made you a promise and I have arrived. Now I am here. A kingdom is come that is not from this world, but is for this world. Yes. Come on, somebody Amen. should be giving God Amen. praise Amen. right now. So when Jesus was crucified, many thought it was over, including the devil. But Jesus said, it ain't over. I made a promise. I will be back. Because the first Adam betrayed God, which caused the transference of power, dominion, authority to rule. The authority was given away. It was handed over. Man surrendered their rada, their dominion, their power over to Satan which itself is a legal transaction that can only be done or uh, undone by another legal transaction, yeah, which yeah. began on the cross. On the cross, the transaction began to take place. When Jesus says, Tatalistia, it is finished, every Jewish person there would have instantly recognized this word as the equivalent of the Hebrew phrase that was used in the Old Testament sacrificial system. Each year, the Jewish holiday called the Day of Atonement, the high priest would enter into the temple to make a special sacrifice for the sins of the people. As soon as the priest killed the animal, he would emerge from that place and declare, it is finished. In this sacrifice, all the sins of Israel were symbolically placed on the lamb that will be punished and killed for their sins. Yet the biblical teachings that this sacrificial system was never sufficient. We needed, a, a, it was always temporary. But when Jesus died on the cross, he became the perfect sacrifice for all sins. Somebody say perfect sacrifice. Perfect sacrifice. The book of Hebrews, the 10th chapter, verses 12 through 13 and verse 18, describes how Jesus is the ultimate lamb. And, and God, ultimate lamb of God. And by his sacrifice, the promise is kept. Somebody say promise kept. Promise kept. That night, Jesus gave up his ghost. They buried him in a tomb. They laid him there that Friday night. I could imagine the naysayer saying, I thought he was coming back. No Jesus. All day Saturday, they look for him. No Jesus. But early that Sunday morning, I can hear the chatter. And I can remember, and, and I can 
can hear them say his words, for this cause, yeah. this purpose I was born, and for this cause, this purpose I have come into the world, that I should bear witness of the truth. Somebody say promise kept. Promise kept. The women around the empty tomb were shouting, he is risen. I can hear him say, I am the promise kept. Yeah. Jehovah is my name. Yeah. The independent, self-complete being. I am who I am. Yeah. Jehovah Mikdash, the God who sanctifies. Infinite, God beyond measure, prodigious God. One who we cannot define by a size or amount. I am omnipotent, God all-powerful. Jehovah Jireh, the God who provides. Jehovah Shalom, the God who is our peace. Immutable, transcendent, omnipresent, all-powerful God. I am Jehovah Rapha, the God who heals. I am self-sufficient. I am merciful. I am the sovereign. I am Jehovah Nisi, God our banner. He is the all-wise God, faithful, true, promise kept. He is risen, our grace, our comforter. He is the promise keeper. He is God. And if he has made us a promise, you better believe that he can keep it. Yes, amen. He is the truth. He is the way. Yes. And he is the life. Oh, thank you. He is a promise keeper. Yes. Yes. Somebody shout promise kept. Promise kept. Now you know why today is so significant. Yes. Why we celebrate this day. Yes. Amen. Because he made a promise yes. <laughs> that he surely kept. Yes. Amen. 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 The word Amen. of God for you, his people of God. Amen. 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 Thanks be to God. Amen. We, we're going to do things a little different because this is the first time we had an opportunity to take communion together. Amen. Now we have a clear understanding of why we celebrate our resurrected Savior. Amen. Yes. We're going to take this time because he said in his word, as often as we do this, do it in remembrance of me. So we're going to do things twofold. We don't usually pass the plate around, but in response to his word, as you come around and you drop your offering in, I'm going to take the opportunity and I'll bless your offering. We'll ask that you, at that time, pick up your communion. And when you go back to your seat, we're going to break bread together. Amen? Amen. 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 So if you have your offering, you want to raise it so that we can bless it. Loving Lord, we know that this is good ground. So as your people have heeded your word and Heated your unction in their hearts, we ask that you allow your windows of heaven to be open and pour forth your blessings upon your people. Lord, we just ask that you allow it to rain upon them a thousandfold. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So I ask that as you prepare to come and to receive, I need Sister Mallet. As you prepare your hearts to receive communion, we ask that you come by, and when you go back to your seat, we'll break bread together. And we're doing this in celebration of this day because this is an awesome and powerful day. Amen? So as the Holy Spirit leads you, we ask that you come. Lord Jesus Christ. The body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Christ. There's no power to 
mighty and loving. Lord, my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Mighty and loving, my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The mighty and loving, my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The mighty and loving, my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ.